Today, we're joined by Stephanie Romanchewski, who is a sleep physiologist. And Stephanie is going to talk to us about how we can get a better night's sleep. And I know, Stephanie, that you have your own clinics and you work with NHS Sleep Clinics, which is the British Health Service. But I just want to start with the, the most old fashioned solutions yeah. for sleep, yeah. which were probably sleeping pills. Um, and in a way, we're going to work back to what are the most modern solutions to sleep in a way, Stephanie, because I think quite a lot of our audience are older. They might be with a doctor who just says, here's a sleeping pill, you know, and oh, it's gosh, like, I'd like them the most to yeah, evolved to the modern way of how to deal with it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's sleeping pills. And I think it's the biggest bit of information to take from this is you're not getting all that repair of your body necessarily. And that's the key thing of sleep and what it should be doing for you. If we go a step back from that and say melatonin, because I now take melatonin mm. instead of sleeping pills, but I'm taking it all the time. Mm. So I want to understand short-term and long-term use of melatonin. So it's not like a sleeping pill. So melatonin is much more to do with the timing of your sleep. So we use melatonin in sleep clinics to fix people that have problems with their circadian rhythm. So yeah. it's circadian rhythm, for anyone who doesn't understand, it's, it's, it's any kind of physiological process that lasts around a 24 hour period. So your sleep-wake cycle being one of the most prominent ones. You've also got mood regulation, temperature regulation, food, hunger regulation, that's all circadian rhythms. And they all affect each each other by the way so the more regular you are with one of them the better you are going to be with the other with melatonin the way we use it is if we need to shift someone's timing of sleep so there is something for example called advanced sleep phase syndrome and delayed sleep phase syndrome these people literally genetically they are genetically prone in advanced sleep phase syndrome to get to sleep much earlier so they are literally feeling sleepy way before 9 p.m i'm talking about two, three, four in the afternoon okay. means they're waking up a lot earlier in the night or you've got delayed sleep phase where the opposite is true and they will be going to bed late. And when I say late, I mean three, like four, two o'clock. But we will use light exposure and melatonin to actually shift their sleep wake cycle to put it back to what they need it to be in our westernized society of a nine to five life because family friends everybody else is on that yeah. we do notice because as we get older melatonin levels do drop in menopausal women it drops even further and so using melatonin to make sure you've got that initial okay, we know we're supposed to start to feel sleepy now as your brain needs, mm -hmm. that can kind of be helpful. But in terms of if you're just using it for insomnia, for example, there's actually not very much evidence. If you're just struggling with fragmentation or just getting to sleep, but your actual schedule, when you can get it to work, is fine for you, that's when it's less helpful and long term, it doesn't have the same kind of effects. We haven't researched it enough, by the way, to see real long term effects. So but it is a lot safer. But at the same time, I don't want anyone to feel like who are watching this. Oh, my gosh, I shouldn't be on sleeping pills because that fear and that anxiety. Yeah the sleep problem worse and actually yeah. when I work with people I'm like look until you see what I'm doing working for you and you trust in the process you carry on with the sleeping pills because and so what things would you see working for them in the science as we know it right now there is only one way to fix a long-term sleep problem and long-term I mean anything longer than three months yeah. we were dealing with people that have had it for decades yeah that is something called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia but please do not confuse it with CBT for depression anxiety pain I hate the fact that we call it CBTI I wish we called it behavioral medicine because that's what it is yeah. and essentially what we're doing really is firstly a lot of the information we know about sleep is wrong so our logic and what we're taught by our mums and dads so the concept of having a sleep drive nobody seems to understand that you've got to actually spend time awake to be asleep so if you're fearing sleepiness you're never going to fix your problem and then the idea of sleep debt sleep debt it's not an eye for an eye you can't lose four hours and gain four hours that's not how it works in fact your brain is so amazingly beautifully smart that it can actually take that deprivation and if you don't change anything about your behavior so what i mean is don't take the sleeping pill do not go to bed early just because you think you should yes of course as a byproduct you're going to feel a bit sleepy but sleepiness is exactly what you need in order to get sleep we've taught people to fear it and actually we need it and with a bit of sleep deprivation your brain can actually fix that process so weirdly a bad night's sleep 
sleep can actually be good for you if you don't start compensating and thinking as a human, oh my God, I've heard not sleeping is really bad. We need to correct those behaviors. So that's the first thing we have to do. This advice, by the way, really important is to help people get back on track. Now I'm no saint. Of course, I don't do this all the time, but I do it most of the time. We need to make sure we consistently through the day do really good exercise and eating, really important. Move, get light and eat and do it consistently and at regular intervals. Don't muck up that process on a regular basis. The more consistent you are on a daily basis. Get light, what do you mean, get light? Yeah, and so get light yeah. on you. So it doesn't matter if it's artificial because at the end of the day, if you're up at six like me, most of the time, you're not going to get any light outside. You can get light alarms, light boxes, or you don't have to spend money. It's a free resource. We've got it all around. Well, it's not free because you have to light your house but even but if you've like got a bright thing. light bulb just a bright light bulb in a lamp or going to your brightest rooms in the house for half an hour in the morning can be incredibly powerful yeah okay so i'm not going to get to sleep at the same time every night i'm going to stay up until i'm tired i'm always going to get up at the same time i'm mm. going to move get light on me and eat properly what else am i going to do so if you do wake up in the night this is where people really start to get anxious but at the end of the day if you're unable to get back to sleep once you've resolved whatever it is most people will try to force sleep now imagine if you were young and your teachers were shouting at you while you were trying to do a maths equation you just wouldn't be able to do it you would be upset you'd maybe even be in tears and that's what we're doing to our sleep we're literally being so horrible to it yeah. and what we really need to do is think okay I haven't got a strong drive to sleep right now for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, what I would do is I would leave the bedroom. I would continue with your evening activities. Yes, you can look, watch a bit of TV. You could you could do something. I want you to do something and only you know will know what this is that makes you feel happy and content. And that's okay. Tell your brain, you know what? I'm resting. I'm out of the bedroom. So I don't have an association between the bedroom and not sleeping, which is not good because that's where the stress comes in. So with all these other things that I've asked you to do I promise you your brain will use the mild sleep deprivation that you've incurred to reset your sleep but people and what if you then go and watch tv at that stage that's okay just reduce the brightness I get that blue light does have an effect on sleep but here's the thing if you've got a consistent sleep problem you've got bigger fish to fry and I want you to feel comfortable and I promise you if you did this for two three weeks you would 100% see a, a quality uh, difference and a duration difference in your sleep if you need it so that's if you need it think about expectations here because a lot of people think they should be getting eight hours and they potentially aren't eight hour sleep okay let's talk about that what kind of person and body and life stage requires what amount of time of sleep? How much sleep do we really need? It seems to be around about somewhere like 6.5 to 9.5 hours of sleep. So that is a huge range, right? But guess what? There are people with genetic abnormalities that will sleep for less time. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a small proportion of them, but they exist. And people yeah. need more sleep. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with those people. I just want to ask you this then. <laughs> that having like at the end of my bed there's a few huge computer you know tv screen because my partner likes that there's a sky box there's two apple boxes oh. there's you know we both have phones i have my ipad my laptop probably okay it's less about that and it's much more about what you associate with those things so if you're going to a room at night that does not seem different from anywhere else in your house in terms of you've worked there you do other things but sleep there. And I don't mean sex, by the way, because sex is very good for sleep. So we're not talking about sex, but everything else you might do in the bedroom that, that is not sleep, like work, like watch TV, all these things. And you do it all the time. It's not, it, there's no difference for your sleep. There's so I, like, I only watch TV in the bedroom. I wouldn't say it could be a perpetuating factor for not being able to sleep with good quality every single night. So what I would suggest there is, okay, just take the TV out put it somewhere where you're happy to watch it right up until the point where you get sleepy. So can I ask you a few little things now? Yeah. If you wake up in the middle of the night, mm. um, is it really, and you need to go to the loop, there's a light always on in the bathroom. So oh. I kind of go in and I do this. <laughs> That depends on how bright your lights are. So it is true that most people's bathrooms are really brightly lit. So yeah. you want, I mean, the ideal, the gold standard would be that you have a way to light your floor, you yeah. like the, the bathroom. But not to have that bright light. The less you sleep with good quality, the more you become sensitive to your surroundings. And it's a horrible, vicious cycle. And if you came to see a sleep expert, which we do exist because people think we don't, and they don't realize that it's a proper clinical condition, they get 
no validation or reassurance from their doctors and that's really sad but it's because they're not educated as well in medicine it's a it's a forgotten area and so they don't realize that actually there is a treatment out there there is something where we would actually i talked about mild sleep deprivation and the idea of manipulating it to fix your sleep problem and we would put you through a bit of a protocol which is quite harsh for a few weeks it's true but we will make it easier for you we will adapt it to your life and we will make sure that you are sleeping by the end of it there is a way to fix this okay. problem and also stephanie i think because we're at a stage in life where people want an immediate fix and a pill is an immediate sure. fix yeah. and uh, doing something that takes two, three weeks, you're thinking, but I've got to get up early for work. I'm yes. going to do yeah. this. You, know, you kind of, it's like somebody who needs to go to rehab, you know, oh, like, sure. are you going to put 101 excuses in front of yourself or are you going to realize that you actually, you know, have a, a problem and you need to just go and get help. Love it. I mean, I could sit talking to you all night. It's so helpful. Even just talking to you now, I'm going to get a sense of, what I should think about. And I think the thing I've picked so much from you, Stephanie, is set that morning time because it's, you know, your body will know ultimately then how many hours it wants to be awake during the day. And then it will start to begin to tell you. And it's about listening to our body. Mm, you know, absolutely. Great. Um, so, uh, yes, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. It's, it's important things like this where we educate people that actually make the difference. Like you said, we don't want people to get to the point where they have a sleep problem. They have to come to see me. Let's educate the kids. Let's educate all of us so that we don't get to that point. Great. And we'll leave all your information below.